Stud Doogie here with chapter 4 of my Dead Space 2 no damage playthrough on, uh, on Zealot difficulty. Uh, we left off, we made it all the way to the Unitologist Center or church and um, now we're going to try to make our way out of here and meet up with Dana who's been helping us uh, sort of navigate and, uh, or escape uh, from, from EarthGov. So we're going to spend all our nodes here, continue to upgrade the javelin because it's our primary weapon. And um, it's okay to spend all our nodes because we're going to get... Uh, well, first there is no node room between here and where we're going. And second, we're going to get uh, a couple nodes along the way, so it's okay to go ahead and uh, spend it. Now, if you're playing through this for the first time, then, you know, it's just a good idea to keep a node on you so when you get to a node room, you have access to it. Now, I, I like this fight. It's kind of it's kind of circular. Well, not really circular. It's kind of straightforward. You do make some right angles, like right here. You're going to go left, shoot the guy on the left, and then get the, uh, the that necromorph. The interesting thing about this fight is if you stay in the room, more will spawn. So you have the choice of kind of moving quickly. That was an input error. Uh, moving quickly and not fighting as many or staying in and uh, fighting some more and possibly getting some more uh, credits and, and ammo and the like. I've chosen to go the, the faster way. So just, you know, knock over the ones that we've killed, get the loot that they have and keep it moving. But, you know, if you're looking for some more stuff to shoot like in a, in a new game plus playthrough and you have shit ton of ammo and you're not resource constrained at all, then you can hang out in that room and get a couple more kills. And like I said, I'm never going to be a speedrunner because I do like killing stuff. I do like picking stuff up. So I'm not trying to avoid the content. I prefer to engage in it. Um... So we're going to get the stuff here, and this is going to be another situation where we're going to use the decompression feature, or the, the decompression ability as a, as a feature to save some ammo. Uh, we're going to wait for both enemies to spawn. This is important. You want to wait for both of them to show up before you fire. And, you know, if you miss it, for example, if you don't get in there in time and you get pulled through, you'll have the opportunity to shoot the triangle and shut the door yourself so don't worry too much if you make an attempt and you don't get into the room in time just shoot the triangle and the door will close and all will be well she is so annoying I mean I know she's a kind of a uh, essential driver in the story so those those interruptions those I'm, let's call them PTSD episodes by the way so a couple things before I talk about that first of all I love absolutely everything about what's about to happen next and the second thing is you know what I'll talk about the second thing after this pay attention pay attention to the animation pay attention to everything about what's about to happen Look at his face. Like, look at, it, look at the terror in his face. Look at the fear in his face. That is really what. Look at it. And then it's done, and it's him, right? It's that is without question one of the best story beats in this game. It's all him. It's telling you that it's in his head. You know, so the things that he's perceiving aren't real. He's making them real to a certain extent. I, I just love everything about that. You know, it's you, we, the player, think he just got attacked. And all this time we've been interacting and engaging with this entity, we've concluded that it's all in his head. And then we're in this moment where it seems like it's not in his head, as if it has, you know, a corporeal reality. And then we find out it's in his head. So, you know, we're kind of being pulled back and forth emotionally with what just went on there so I, I, I just think that's really really well done the other point I was going to make is that we're in the tunnels the tunnels is the one safe place in this game it's the one place after the first chapter where we're escaping from that from the hospital and that's the first time we go into um, you know the ducks the the vents and stuff 
and that one enemy runs away from us. It's the one place in the game where we don't have to worry about being attacked. And maybe that was part of the point in that first encounter with the enemy where he ran away from us to establish for us that you're safe here. You won't get attacked in here. So every single time when I was playing you know, the first couple playthroughs, every single time I would go into the vents, I had a sense of calm because I knew that I wasn't going to get attacked. Like everywhere else, like there's a there's a there's a violence around the corner, but the vents, the one place where that wasn't the case. So, um, yeah. Now I have a love hate relationship with these dudes because I think it's kind of cool that they that they peek out at you, but then it's just kind of douchey too. Like peekaboo, you know what I mean? Like get serious. I'm trying to murder you. You're trying to murder me. Why are we playing peekaboo? Now, I didn't need to explode those guys, but I'm trying to get the muscle memory to do it because later on in the game, there's going to be a different, more powerful variant where you do need two shots or the explosion to take them down. So I didn't want to get uh, lazy and comfortable only firing one shot. And then when we get to the harder variant, uh, my muscle memory is of only shooting them once. That's why I'm, I'm willing to waste the bullet. To get that muscle memory unlocked so later in the game I don't you know take any damage because uh, I wasn't expecting it now I just kind of talked over a little bit of the dialogue but the dialogue now that I'm watching it and re-watching it I'm realizing that it's an indicator because right now in the story we don't know we have not yet learned that Dana is a eulitologist zealot that's really trying to use Isaac and has no intention of really helping him. But I think the part of the conversation that got cut off was that she was saying, don't disturb the bodies. And that would have indicated to us that she is a unitologist and that she's really not trying to help us. Um, like, I didn't notice that before. Like, I'm, I'm noticing some details now that I'm doing post commentary that I didn't, I wasn't aware of while playing the game. Now you're gonna have to forgive me for this part because it's a real maze. So I get turned around in here all the time. Um, I didn't get turned around that time, but it's a thing. I get turned around in this area. So we're gonna just double back, sell some stuff, upgrade our gear a little bit more, and you know, and keep it moving. Man, I despise unitologists, but I think as a as a concept executed in this game, it's really well done, and it and it kind of speaks to how easily humans are fooled into myths and legends. You know, like this is not a real religion, of course, but it could be. You know, we've created weirder ones than well. I don't think we've created anything as weird as this. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, Unitology is just kind of nuts, but, you know, we got sh shit like um, that L. Ron Hubbard stuff, Scientology, you know, so it's probably a play off of Scientology to call it Unitology and instead of like, you know, Unichristian or Uni something else. Alright, now this guy thinks he's slick. Now what I like about this setup is that you see those things and you might get think that what you should be doing is taking care of the worms and then you get bum rushed right but we know better and so we approach it appropriately but if you playing it for the first time or when I was playing for the first time I got tricked into paying attention to the worms and then got overrun uh, by uh, by the zombies and those are the really really fast moving ones there's one more that moves fast one that only has two hands and a tail this dude motherfucker right here like the first time i played it and i rolled upon him i don't know why i didn't think to myself to shoot him first but i didn't like an idiot and i rolled upon him i got fucked up like you know i i pissed myself a little bit i'm, I'm not gonna lie i'm not just, i'm not gonna lie to y'all i'm just keep it real tell y'all the truth i i there was a little bit of moisture uh, in the private region after that dude like just jumped up and murdered me. I was like, son of a bitch. Ugh. But we know better, so we do better now.
Now, what's another fascinating bit here is how long this elevator ride is relative to all the other elevator rides. So I'm like, oh, shit, something's going to happen because this one's longer. This is the it. This is the one where uh, I'm going to get jumped. And, you know, like, so all this tension. I mean, this this game does such a good job of tension. So we've reached the end of chapter four. And uh, so that's going to be it for this one. And I uh, will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.